In this video, we're going to show you how to take your epoxy surface and sand and polish it like a pro. We're going to go over all the tools and techniques necessary to take stone coat countertops to that next level. We're going to show you the exact sheen that we like to finish, also how we address the edges of our projects, and much more. Stay tuned and visit us anytime at StoneCoatCountertops.com. Hey guys, Mike here with StoneCoatCountertops.com. Today we're going to go over sanding and polishing your final top coat. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start with Merca pads. We really like these pads because they last a long time. They don't clog up and we can do this dry. We don't need water so it doesn't make a mess in the house. Uh, we line this up with our DeWalt 5 inch random orbital sander. You can find this on our tool links so that you know exactly which one that is. It's on our product page where it says tool links. That's what we use. So this sander will be on there. We have an eight hole pattern. Our, our discs line right up with that and a vacuum can be connected to our sander to really mitigate the dust inside somebody's house. So we're going to start with 220, we'll go to 240, and we'll graduate up those grits until we get to 600 grit with these pads. From that point, we'll switch to our Merca Aberlon discs. These are originally made to sand bowling balls, epoxy, right? So we're going to use these to bring that final polish nice and nice and shiny. But one thing to keep in mind, whenever you're sanding and polishing, you're never going to bring it back to this brilliant, bright, perfect finish. When you look at natural stone, it's never this shiny. It's always a couple steps down and that's right where these pads will take it and then we're going to uh, use our compound to bring it up to that, that finish shine that we're looking for. So we're going to go through the process right now. It's really easy. We got the right pads. Let's get started. You can find all of these sanding discs right there on our website on our product page under Stone Coat Countertops. Dot com. The reason that we actually carry these is because usually you have to buy them in bulk and a lot of them in one box. So we broke it down into an assortment pack. On this first disc, all we're doing is taking our 220 grit sandpaper and we're going to use that until we get rid of any protrusion, anything that may be sticking up out of the surface. We're feeling with our hand as well as sanding just to make sure it's nice and smooth. Whenever you're sanding and polishing, you want to go both directions. We went long ways and then we went perpendicular with the piece. Just a couple passes like that with each grit is all you need. Now I'm going to address the edges. I'm going to turn the speed on my sander down. We're going to get rid of any bumps on those edges and then we'll do the cove by hand. Let's do that right now. Here, what we're doing is just sanding those edges by hand where that cove is. Where we're using the heavier grits, we start by hand. Once we move to those Aberlon discs, those softer discs, we don't need to do that by hand anymore. But this is a great way to not burn through your edges. Be sure to wipe the dust in between each grit and then you'll be prepared and ready for that next step. Now oftentimes in a job, you won't need to start as low as our lowest grit, which is 220 grit. You can start at 600 grit or you can start higher than that, depending on what you're trying to remove. If we came back to a job a couple years later and it's showing wear and there's scratches to remove, you'd want to start lower than that deepest scratch to remove that and then work your way back up. Here we're showing 220 grit as worst case scenario and we'll bring it back up from that point to show the polish that can be achieved with our top coat. Uh, what we did is we did 220, then we did the edges with 220, and then we finished by hand on those coves. When you do those edges, turn your sander down and do the coves. Just remove any of the voids where, where you, when you rub your hand on it, it feels really, really smooth, but don't go too deep where you burn through that edge. That's just the key there is you don't have to get it perfect, but make sure you feel it because then when you get the polish back, that's what you're going to feel. Some of the imperfections in the sheen aren't going to show through, but how it feels is important. Let's go to the next grit. That first grit is really important. 
because that's where you're removing all your imperfections and then from this point on you're simply bringing the shine back so it's not as long between grits. This is something that we also highly recommend you practice on a sample board first before you get the hang of it and then when you get the hang of it you can do this on jobs anytime but then you'll know what to expect and you'll have something to show your customers of what your sanding and polishing will look like as an end result. We'll repeat all of these steps in each grit by first sanding the top, then sanding the edges, then by hand the coves, and then finally cleaning the surface. Take your time on those edges and remember, have fun. Okay guys, we got our first discs all done. We went up to 600 grit. Now we're gonna go back to our bowling ball discs, or our Avalon discs. These are gonna start back at 500 so that we erase any scratches made by those first sanding discs. We're gonna go from 500 to 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, and we'll end at 4,000 grit, which will be a perfect setup for our final polish. We're just gonna do the same process using these pads. Let's get started. The Avalon discs have a built-in interference pad so you can do the edges without worrying about burning through. Still be careful, but they're very forgiving. Okay guys, we're all sanded up. That uh, feels really, really good. And this would be a great place to stop if you wanted a matte finish. You could just use a cleaner and clean it off and you'd have a great matte finish. Or you could stop at whatever step you'd like depending on how low of a sheen you would like to achieve. At this point, we're gonna use our polishing compound and we're gonna go ahead and polish this out. We start in two foot sections, so I'll do about two feet at a time until I get the polish I desire and then I'll just work right down the piece. Uh, I'm going to use a white compounding pad on a dual action polisher. Uh, you want a dual action, that way it's rotating as well as vibrating and then you get a really good finish. Let's go ahead and do that. I like to use a five inch on here. It works really good. You can use a, a regular orbital with a larger but we're finding better results with a dual action. Okay, what I'm going to do is just prime my pad a little bit here. All of the tools we're using in this video can be found on our Amazon links on our product page. And I'll put a little bit of that compound down here. I like to swirl it around, just get it moved out on my piece, and I like the working time of this compound. All right, let's do it. We're going to go both directions, side to side and front to back as we're polishing.
All right, guys, we got it all compounded. It feels incredible. The shine is perfect. You really nail that natural stone appearance. It's not too shiny. It's not too dull. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use our final touch. It's our liquid smooth. We're going to spray that on there. And when we wipe it off, it just makes this thing feel like everything would glide on it. It's a really good finishing touch spray. We also do this before parties or showrooms or where you really want your counters just to become outstanding. This is what we're going to use. You can find it on our product page along with our compound. We have used Meguiar's 105 in the past. It's a great compound, but we love the sheen that our product gives us. It also has a very long working time. You don't have to apply as much and you don't get it all over you. When we used to use Meguiar's, it would spit all over the kitchen. In this case, it tends to stay where you put it and that helps a lot on site. All right, to apply the liquid smooth, we just use our real fine mist spray bottle and I'm just going to spray this counter out. Goodness gracious, this really makes a difference. Um, you're going to love the way it feels. This is great to get all that excess compound right off your counter. You want to let it dry and then when you feel it, you'll feel the difference. It smells really nice. It's a great product that when you're done and you're installing, it just leaves that really good scent behind. All right, guys, we spent a little bit of time taking this and sanding it down all the way to 220 as if we've run into some deep, right. heavy scratches, right? Right, right? What do you think of the finish, Mitch? It looks awesome. The, the shine's a little bit lower, which I, I like that better, actually. It's a little more natural. Right. That's beautiful. You know, you get a lot of phone calls every day from people looking for a lower sheen or not yep. just so plasticky, right. and this is what gets you there. Yep. Uh, it's also insurance down the road. If you scratch your counters up, you could bring it back to this sheen easily, no problem. Yep, exactly. I know you were skeptical. We've been fighting. What pads do we use? Where do we yeah. go? How do we get the best system? We're always looking for the best and we'll continue to look for the best. Yes, we will. This is a good system. It's really easy to follow. That was the whole key. Something that's repeatable, something you don't need water. You can do it safely in the house. You'd want to tent up and hook that up to your vacuum. Right. Just run some plastic so you isolate it. But if you run your vacuum, you're going to get very little airborne dust. Uh, man, I, I love this finish. I, do you like the feel of it? I do. And yeah. that, that cleaner smells real nice. First yeah. thing I notice is it smells really good, smooth, and a uniform feel. Looks beautiful. Guys, give us your feedback on this. We're going to do some close-ups. We'll show you the sheen. It's really pretty. Test it out anytime. You can visit our website at StoneCoatCountertops.com. And until next time, from Stone Coat Countertops, you got this. We'll see you soon. Good job, man. That was good timing. <laughs> All right.